Romans chapter 3, verse 5. Romans chapter 3, verse 5. We did verse 1 through 4 last week. We've been going verse by verse through the scriptures. Won't be long before you today because, you know, I, I sing to you for about 10 minutes. So I'm going to cut this short. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid, for then how shall God judge the world? For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? Now these are these are like riddles that I'm going to break down to you. Paul is speaking very much rhetorically. I'm going to break it down. That's why we only did four verses last week. So I'm going to break this down for you. Verse 8, And not rather as we be slanderously reported, as some affirm that we say, Let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together, are, are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of ass is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, and that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Verse 20, let's read this together. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Let's read it in Spanish. Ya que por las obras de la ley ningún ser humano será purificado delante de él, porque por medio de la ley es el conocimiento del pecado. Amen. I want to talk to you on this subject uh, this evening. What is man? What is is man. Can you lay your Bibles down and lift up your hands? Let's ask God to speak. Lord, I thank you for these amazing people. I thank you for the hunger that's here. I thank you for your faithfulness, your love, your kindness. Let the word of God be quick and sharp and powerful. Minister, oh God, these are your children. These are people that you created for a divine purpose. Lord, you must increase and I must decrease. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. What is man? What is man? The Apostle Paul is writing to the church in Rome, literally trying to persuade them to come into unity. He's persuading them to come into unity because... The Roman church, it was initially a Jewish church, but then they exiled the Jews, many of the Jews. And when they exiled many of the Jews, um, then the Gentiles, it became a major Gentile church. A, a Gentile is anyone that's not a Jew. It became a major Gentile church. And then the Jewish Christians started trickling back in. And when they started trickling back in, there was a tension between them because each of them felt like their way was the better way. And because of their backgrounds, there was tension in the church, and Paul was trying to bring them to the common theme that all of us were born in sin, and all of us need a Savior in Jesus Christ. And so that is the bottom line. You have something in common with the person next to you. Uh, you, but all of you were born into sin and all of you need Jesus. 
And so that is the bloodline. That is the thing that holds us together, that we are wretched and undone without him. But with him, we can do all things. I'm nothing without him, but I can be anything with him. Because through Christ, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And so he comes to the bottom line that to be a conqueror is not based on your military background or anything that you have come from. To be a conqueror, it comes through Christ. He, he puts their trust not in the pagan traditions of the past, not in the hocus pocus of yesterday with the Gentiles. And also he says, don't put your trust in the mysticism uh, of the Jewish traditions or of the law because the law cannot help you. It cannot save you. It just can only reveal the sin that's in you. And he gives them tunnel vision that the only way that you're going to be what God wants you to be is not through the law or not through your past traditions, but it's going to be through Jesus Christ. He is the source. He is the focus. He is the theme. He is everything. He, he is everything. And he has to bring them to the bottom line. And every church always has to come back to that bottom line. Uh, because people can, I see it in, in the uh, mainstream Christianity, people get divided over everything. They can fight about everything. They fight about ants. They find a fight about lights. They fight about they fight about Christmas. They fight about fight about Halloween. They fight, they can fight they find anything to fight about, but they 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 don't get unified over anything. And 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 if and if you if they like, well, well, I, I believe that you should only wear a white shirt. Well, well, praise God. Well, what about blue? Well, blue is of the devil. Like my. Where y'all coming up with this stuff? Like, it's easy to get divided over, over anything. And I told you about the time that I was in Canada, and the person uh, told me we were talking, and we were just having light conversation, and I'm not here to cause no trouble. I'm just here to hang out. And they were like, Brother Jackson, you go study and, and, and drink coffee, right? I said, yeah, man, I, I do drink coffee. And, and they were like, yeah, we love coffee. Man, I love coffee, too. It was just a great bond. And then somebody says, I don't drink coffee. I'm apostolic. <laughs> what? It was, yeah, man, real Christians don't drink coffee. Oh, wow. I'm like, God have mercy. I said, like, so, so here it is. We're, we're about to have a spiritual war over coffee. A spiritual superiority contest. It's the flesh. It's the flesh when someone's always trying to find a way to be over somebody. Amen. Amen. Right? It's the flesh. And, and so I said, I said, well, let me ask you this. I said, do you drink water? He said, of course I do. I said, well, you're not apostolic. <laughs> he said, what do you mean? I said, you're not a Christian. You drink water. He said, what do you mean? I said, you're not drinking the same water the apostles were drinking. Their water was like dirty and stuff. You got spring water, bro. <laughs> How far can we go with this? I mean, we can go on and on. And then they say, well, I got a white shirt on. And I can say, well, where's your white shirt from? Well, it's from J.C. Penney. Well, do you know what they believe? It's white, but where did it come from? Come on, are you getting what I'm saying? Like, we can fight over these issues, and this is the type of issues that, that they were fighting over in Paul's day, fighting over small, insignificant things that was a disunity to the body. They had forgotten the source of that if it hadn't been for the grace of God, if it hadn't been for the love of God, where would we be? I, we, I tell you where we be. We go to hell with our white shirt on. We go to hell with our coffee. Come on, somebody. If it wasn't for Jesus, we wouldn't be here today. That's the common ground. And, and, and anything that is not edifying is, 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 is not from God. The Bible says that evil communications corrupt good manners. And so anything that is not to the edifying of the body, it's to the destruction of the body. And, and it's not good. Everybody say, it's not good. So, you, so what Paul is doing is bringing them back to why they started their journey. You ever just forgot why you started the journey? And you got hung up on little issues? <laughs> this is what Paul is saying. And we, we concluded last week 
with Paul. Paul, he never went, he didn't go to Rome at this time. He didn't go to Rome at this time. Is there a little echo? I felt that. Help, help me out. That's my singing, that's my singing mic. That's my, that's my, help me out. I don't, amen. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm not gonna, I got to do something with that echo. I got to hum it out or something. Don't make me get back into my song. Amen. Don't make me. I will pull it out. Paul, he was an apostle to the Gentiles. And when he was, a, if, if this one's not working, then, then I can use another one. You can do that. Well, praise God. Praise God. Hello. Is, is it echoing or is it better? Praise God. Amen. Everybody. So the Apostle Paul, it, it echoed again. Let me get another one. Let me get. It's testing, testing, one, two. Testing. I, I, might have to, I might have to project my voice. I might have to do like the old days. I might have to pull out a Charles Spurgeon on you. Open, open mic. Testing, test, test. Is it better? No, I still, I still hear, this is Hill, I still hear someone preaching back to me. <laughs> testing, testing. Oh my goodness. Okay. I, I, that, that's gonna. That. And so they were wondering why he hadn't come because he's the apostle to the Gentiles and Rome was a large church. And he begins to speak about the commonality of the Jew and the Gentile because of their division that the Jews oh, were supposed to obey God because of the law. But he said that the Gentiles, that they did not have the law. And because they did not have the law, they were still doing by nature those things that are in the law. What that means is, is that there are people that do not know God, but still get married. Come on, now, that's good. That's good. There are atheists that get married. There are different religions that still get married. Why? Because by nature, everyone's created in the image of God. Amen. Everyone is made in the image of God. Everyone is someone that was created by God. And so by their nature, by what the nature that God has given them, they are still doing those things that are in the law. Wow, that's good. And they become a law unto themselves, meaning when they go to judgment, they can't say, I didn't know, because it was in their nature to lead them wow. into some type of knowledge. That's good. And we talked about, and I'm not going to go deep into it, we talked about general revelation and special revelation. And how general revelation is when God uses the, 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 the creation, <coughs> the world, the grass, the trees, the, the fruit, the, the stars. He, he uses nature to point to a creator. Right. That's general revelation. Special revelation is when God doesn't use the earth to help you to try to see him, but it's when he speaks to you and says, I am Jehovah Jireh. A special revelation. And Jesus is the full revelation of God. Amen. In him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Everything is in Jesus. Amen. So you hear a lot about the Old Testament names of God. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider. Uh, Jehovah Ra, the Lord uh, uh, our, our uh, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. Jehovah Over that, and it's all these attributes of God, but in the New Testament, 
Jesus is not an attribute of God. Oh my goodness. I don't know. So, so I don't need to come to church and say Jehovah Rapha or Jehovah God my healer. I don't need to come to church and say Jehovah Sikkenu and Jehovah this and Jehovah that and have all the names of the Old Testament names and attributes, all of them that are a lot that we can use. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner, the Lord our victory. We can go on and on and on, but in the New Testament, because the, and the fullness of God was in the man yeah. Christ Jesus. In the New Testament, we have a name that is above every other name. Come on. And the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall bow. Amen. Woo. Jesus Christ is born. Amen. Oh my goodness. Help me, Lord. I'm, I, could, I could sing here. Is it still echoing? It's better? Praise God. Amen. So can we clap our hands for those that help? Thank you. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much. And so we don't have to come and give a list of names to try to figure out uh, what, what side or aspect of God that we need to pull on. We don't have to go out and say, who do I need today? Well, I'm sick, so I need Jehovah Rapha. Uh, who do I need today? Well, I need peace. Well, I need Jehovah Shalom. Uh, who do I need today? Well, I need Jehovah this and Jehovah that. I don't need to come and look through a book of names when I'm struggling with the f All I need to do is say Jesus. Jesus. And when I say Jesus, everything is in that name. Everything that I need is in that name. So if I'm sick, I just say Jesus. If I need healing in my mind, I just say Jesus. If I'm battling with anxiety or fear, I just say Jesus. Anything that I'm wrestling with, he is. He is. He is. That's the thing about God. He just becomes what you need. That's the Jesus that Paul is glorifying. Jesus just becomes what you need. What do you need? That's what he will become. Well, I need this. Well, he says, well, I will become that. I'm blind. I need eyesight. He said, let my name become your eyes. He said, I can't speak. I'm dumb. He says, let me become your voice. Say my name. I'll I'll give you a voice come on somebody he says well I can't walk I'm limp I've been in a wheelchair my whole life well let my name become your legs I will become whatever you need me to become you just call on my name you just call on my name. He will, he will become whatever he needs to become. Even in the complexities of, of humanity now. And we see with what happened with COVID in 2020. And, and no one in the world had ever seen COVID like in, in the world. It, it was the first time COVID ever hit the world in 2020. And, uh, really, November 17, 2019 was the first case. But it, but, but it really took over the world in 2020. No one had ever seen COVID. COVID like that but all of a sudden there were people that just started saying the name of Jesus and even though they never saw COVID his name knew how to heal COVID I'm going to preach right now even though we never saw it he knows the end from the beginning so when we said his name he was able to come and heal us amen, amen. And there were people getting healed because of the name. They didn't discover cancer till like maybe not even 150 years ago. But let me tell you something. Jesus has healed people from cancer. Any new sickness, any new illness that shows up, there's a name for that. There's a name that could take care of that. Any new disease, any new psychological disease that they come up with. There's a name for that. It just covers everything. You see, you go, you go to a therapist long enough, you know, 
Are you typing your symptoms on Google long enough? We'll find out you messed up real quick. <laughs> Is that struggling with this? And they're like, okay, you have this problem. Here. My God, I don't want to read all that. And Jesus just whispers, can you just say my name? It's like the simple route. You ever went into your ancestry and just got really confused? It's like, ooh, they was messed up. You try to look, you know, you try to look and you, and you try not to claim them, but they got your same forehead. <laughs> you try, you're trying not to claim them, but they got your nose, they got your cheeks, they got, they got, that. that's you. That's you. And you're like, you know what? And Jesus is like, just say my name. Don't, don't get your strength from where you came from. Get your strength from my spirit. Get your strength from my presence. I can take care of it. And just because your dad was an alcoholic, it doesn't mean that you have to be an alcoholic. Just because your mom was this doesn't mean that you need to be that. There's a name that is above every name. And so he ends verse 4 saying that uh, verse 3 and 4, I got to go back for you to understand the rest. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? He says, God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. So what he's saying here is that they're saying, if some people do not believe, does it affect God at all? And he says, it doesn't affect God. He said, because God's righteousness is revealed by those who have faith in him, and his righteousness is revealed in those that do not have faith in them. And it's revealed with them through judgment. And what he's saying here is, is you see the righteousness of God when you see his judgment. Mm. So the, when you see the believer, you can see the righteousness of God. And when you see the unbeliever and the judgment that comes, you can see the righteousness of God. Isn't that interesting? And we talked about it like everybody wants the God of love, and we preach love here. This is our mission, love. By this show that you know that you're my disciples, love. Love for one another. But I talked about how God is also a just God. And I used the illustration last week. Imagine somebody comes to your house, and they steal $125,000 worth of stuff out of your house. Are you going to wave bye-bye and say, I love you? I'm a Christian, so I, have to, I, just, I just love you. Go ahead, bud. That's my favorite watch. Well, you go, you go right ahead. I'm a Christian. No. What do we do? We call the cops. We call the cops. Why? Because there has to be justice. Love without justice is not love. Justice without love is not justice. So, so we call the law to come and fix it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because, and, and we see the righteousness of God through his judgments. So that's, that's what that verse 4 meant. Now let's get to verse 5. He says, but if, now this is where it gets complex and I got to break this down for you. But if our unrighteousness, listen to what he says, commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? So here's what he's saying. He, he's saying that, so if through the believers in faith, God's righteousness is revealed. And through God's judgment on the wicked, his righteousness is revealed. Meaning that no one that ever goes to hell can say it was unfair. What he's saying is, if, if someone goes to hell, God was righteous in sending them there. Because of what he said, he already put everything in the world for them to cultivate belief. Right? The Godhead is plainly seen by nature. Right? He's, he's put everything in the world to make man look up and say, man, there must be a creator out there. So if man goes to judgment because of what the, the, the price that Jesus paid on the cross, 
God is righteous in sending that person to hell because he did everything he needed to do to get them to heaven. Are you getting what I'm saying? So look what Paul says here. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God. So he's saying, so if we're unrighteous, it still makes him look righteous. <laughs> Watch this, guys. What shall we say? If God is unrighteous, who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid. For then how shall God judge the world? For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? What he's saying here is, is that, that everyone in the world is going to reveal the righteousness of God. Some by belief in Jesus, others by being judged. Everybody's going to bring glory whew, some way. So he's saying that what people are going to look at is they're going to say, so should we just do unrighteous to glorify God? Man always find a way out, huh? You're like, should I just keep sinning then? I mean, it's glorifying him, right? Man has PhDs when it comes to unrighteousness, and we're in elementary school when it comes to righteousness. When it comes to unrighteousness, we, we'll find a way to justify it. Like, man, you slapped that person? Yeah, because, you know, remember in the Old Testament when... Isn't that the truth? They'll find a way to bring out a scripture. Did you trip that person and then and then cuss him out? Well, you know, you know what David said when David was in the <laughs> my God, like you taking scripture out of context. We become good, and it's like I said, the mind is never more creative than when finding an excuse. We're we're good. Man is good at finding excuses. We are in in elementary school in finding God. We can find an excuse like that, huh? Finding God is like, hey, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? So he's saying that, verse 8, and not rather as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, he's saying this is the charge, you've heard this of me, because I'm speaking such about the grace of God so much, you have heard that I'm saying, let us do evil that good may come. He said, you're, they say, you're say, speaking such a grace for the sinner and for those that uh, come from rough backgrounds. Now they're, they're lying on Paul saying, man, this guy's doctrine. He's saying, let him do evil that good may come. Like, he's preaching too good of a grace. He's preaching grace to the murderers. He's speaking grace to, to, to the idolaters. He's speaking grace to the pagans. He's preaching grace. So they're saying, listen, if, if, if evil eventually shows the right, righteousness of God, he's saying, well, let us do evil that good may come. Watch this. And let me tell you something. I'm, I'm ministering to somebody in the Holy Ghost here. If you got to look up on Google if it's a sin, it's probably a sin. I'm in the Holy Ghost with that one. I just nailed somebody on that one. I nailed you. I know. Uh, for real. If you got to, look, look, you, you, you tempt it in your head. You're trying to justify it. You're like, hmm. You see it in the KJV, it's a sin. You're like, let me go to another translation. Well, let me see what the message version says. KJV says, thou shall not. Message says, don't do that. <laughs> Start going on Google. Is this a sin? And then, you, and then you start saying, it says, yes, yes, yes. You're like, I don't like these articles. I don't. And then it's like, so then one says, maybe. Oh, now you're talking my language. <laughs> Boy, I'm talking in here, huh? Why can I say something like that? I remember whenever I was in the world, I remember I was 18 years old. 
and I was struggling with this same sin over and over. You know, it's like when you're struggling over and over, you start trying to be like, man, this, this must be God. <laughs> Nobody being real today. Nobody being real. Nobody even want to laugh. Nobody even want to laugh here. You, you, <laughs> It's like, it's like you're struggling with the same sin, so you start trying to find, like, a creative, like, godly way about it. Like, there must be some divine exceptions. <laughs> y'all, y'all making me nervous today. Y'all making me nervous. And so I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm struggling with this same sin. And, like, I, I, done, I done made every promise to God. I done went down the list of promises. I could have wrote a whole book of promises. God, I promise I'm never doing that again. 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 So, is this really a sin, though? <laughs> Done failed so much, I'm questioning. So I went go. I went go to Doctor Google. Google, is this a sin? It's like according to the Bible, this is. It's like, man, I need I need help overcoming this, and it wasn't until I received the power of the Holy Ghost that God gave me dominion and authority and power over that. And, and some people say, well, well, how, why am I still struggling? And I have the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you why. Because you have to yield yourself to the Holy Ghost. I said, you have to yield yourself. So it's like you get it, but you have to feed it. You have to feed it in prayer, in the word, in fasting. You have to feed that spirit man. Because you notice you notice, you don't feed the spirit man? Like the, the flesh man start being like, hey, you forgot about me. Flesh is like, hey, what's up? Hey, come over here, man. You remember, man, you're in, in the flesh always romanticized the past. The flesh was like, man, we was having a good time. It don't show you the depression. It don't show you the heartbreak. Don't show you the toxicity. Don't show you begging. God, take me out of this. Then you, then you get saved. You got the Holy Ghost. You, and and now, now flesh is like, like, hey, man, come back. It wasn't that bad. And you're like, really? you right. I was having fun. Flesh is like, mm-hmm. <laughs> And as, soon, and as soon as you delve into it, all of a sudden you feel guilty again. Right? Amen. But you can be delivered by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We're going to talk about it in Romans 7 where the Apostle Paul said, that which I would do, I do not. That which I want to do, I don't do. And that which I would not do, I do. That, that was difficult, y'all. That, that, was, that was difficult. It's better to just read it in the Bible. Than... <laughs> yeah, for real. So, so if the apostle, so, so, so stop looking today, stop acting so spiritual that you never had a struggle. Come on, somebody. Let's be real in this house. Let's be real. Everybody, it was amazing when I started preaching about that, that struggle, everybody put on like their perfect Christian face. It was, it was crazy. Everybody just went like. <laughs> Everybody went there. Everybody went there. It was like automatic. It was like clockwork. It was like, like it's like I'm not gonna clap. I'm not gonna say, man. I'm not gonna move. I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna make any sudden movements. I'm not standing up. I'm not. I'm not drawing any attention right now. I'm just, <laughs> Amen. Paul said, I was in a struggle. He said, How, who shall deliver me from the body of death? Then he says, I thank God through Jesus Christ that I can be delivered. I can, he has saved me, that he has set me free. You can have deliverance. You can have hope. You can have peace. He can set you free. So look what he says here. He says, so, so people are saying, let us do evil 
that good may come, look what he says, whose damnation is just. He said, for you to even think like that, your damnation is just. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have, have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. He's talking about the state of man. You have to hear this right now. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after, after God. So what he's saying here is that humanity has no capacity to become righteous within themselves. Humanity has no capacity to understand God within themselves. Humanity has no capacity within themselves to even seek after God without the help of God. It says no man can come unto the Father except the Son, except the Spirit draw him. So no person has the human capacity to even go after God in their intellect or in their ability. God has to draw them. So he reaches into the bars. Oh, are you getting it? God will just go everywhere, y'all. To reach into the bars and start and start drawing on somebody. And all of a sudden somebody's drunk and they look at the person next to them and say, what are you doing here? What, man, I'm partying just like you. I'm partying. You're not supposed to be here. God's calling you to preach the gospel. I'm telling you, this stuff happens. In the middle of people being drunk, the spirit has a way of drawing people. In the middle of people, in the middle of sin, the spirit has a way of drawing people. Man doesn't have that capacity to seek after God, to understand God, or to do anything righteous in their flesh. It's, it's only by the grace of Jesus Christ. It's only by the love. See, that person in that bar, they don't deserve Jesus Christ coming where they are. But but Jesus knows how to extend grace to those that don't deserve it. Amen. Okay. Watch this. Watch this. So what he's showing is the futile nature of the flesh of man. That we cannot self-discipline ourselves enough into, into God. That we cannot read enough secular books. To understand God. We cannot do it in the flesh. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Whenever I play college basketball. Let me tell you something. I could, I could play ball for eight hours. When I got saved. My first prayer meeting. I tried to do an eight hour prayer meeting. Five minutes later, <laughs> prayer long, y'all. What am I showing you? See, the flesh can go above and beyond, but you can't pray without God. You need God to help you. You can't just go from that, do eight hours in the world for that, and then come and try to do eight hours. No, there's, this is self-denial. This is something God's going to have to help you with. You can't do this in the flesh. I wish you could. Like, I did, I did, I was so devoted. This, that, that. Wake up this time. Go to bed this time. Blah, 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 blah. Got in the church. I'm, I'm, I'm using the alarm for 4 a.m. prayer, 5 a.m. prayer. I'm using the alarm. I'm hitting the snooze button 20 times. But to go run a lap, to go run a mile at 5 a.m. for basketball, I'm up, I'm ready to go. I'm showing you. I'm showing. Why? Because prayer is against your flesh. Your flesh don't want to do that. Your prayer don't want your your flesh don't want to talk to nothing invisible. Your flesh is like, oh, I see a visible donut. <laughs> I see a visible here. I see I see I see this, I see that, I see that. So, so I could not come into the church and use my discipline from sports and then put it into God's kingdom. Wow. I'm telling you. So what God did to get me disciplined in his kingdom is he broke me down. Whew. He showed me that no matter how hard I tried in my flesh to please him, I couldn't. And he broke 
down. He broke the back of pride in my life. He said, you can't do nothing without me. He said, you could try to do all this in your self-discipline and human motivation if you want. He said, but if you don't abide in the vine, you're good for nothing and cast into the fire. He said, if you want to go to the next level of discipline and prayer and in fasting, you've got to start abiding in me so I can give you the strength to do the right thing. It's not going to come from your old secular mindset. It's going to come from a spiritual. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm teaching you how to grow in your relationship with God. It can't come through the flesh. It has to come endued by the spirit. Okay. Watch this, guys. Watch this. This is powerful to me because he's showing that man has no capacity to be righteous. Our righteousness is but as filthy rags. We have nothing within ourselves. That, that's why anything that glorifies man above God is destined for failure. Any, any person that you put on a pedestal equal to God or above God, it is destined for failure. I'm trying to preach to somebody here. That, that's why your pastor has to stay under the book. Uh, come on now. I'm a man just like you are. And I've got to abide by the principles of this book. I'm not equal with this book. I'm not above this book. My opinion isn't equal to this book. My opinion isn't above this book. I'm under the book. This is the priority. Come on, somebody. Because I, there's nothing in me huh, that can produce righteousness. There's nothing in me that can help you live for God. It's only God through me huh, giving you the words of eternal life. And it's only this book come on that can push pierce past the flesh and cause you to live right watch this so so he says here verse 12 that they are all gone out of the way they are they are together become unprofitable there is none that doeth good no not one so this word unprofitable really just messed me up it just messed me up because this Greek word unprofitable, it literally means to become spoiled milk. Wow. Spoiled milk. Sour. Said so your un man is just unprofitable. Wow. Said so you're good for nothing, man. You just got to, man is so bad that, that just that you throw out the spoiled milk. Eesh said it's unprofitable they don't do good then then he lists man what comes out of man's heart said their throat is an open sepulcher the throat is is a grave and then it moves to the tongue with their tongues they have used deceit this word deceit it literally means to to bait someone with their struggle with bitterness greed and lust to bait and bend them. They use deceit. My God, have mercy. They use deceit. This is what man does. They try to deceive and bait people. If they want money, they'll use money to trip them up to get them to do what they want them to do. If, if, if they hate somebody, they'll use bitterness to bait them and get them un under it. They use deceit. I'm talking about the fragility and the sinfulness of man. The poison of apps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Now it goes from speaking to doing. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. Everywhere they go, they leave a trail of destruction. I'm scared of people where everywhere they go, there's chaos. <laughs> everywhere, everywhere they live a trail of destruction. Anywhere they go, they're in this place. Oh my God, okay, that's on fire. They go, okay, that's on fire. And everybody goes, like, hey, I'm such a victim. <laughs> if everywhere that person has gone, they're not the problem. And they've gone to like three to five places, ten places. I'm going to say they're probably the problem. <laughs> everybody ain't done you wrong, you just wrong. Everybody put on a smile. Everybody put on a smile. <laughs> you, you, we're good. We're good. It's, we're, we're good. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. But that's, that's the deceit. They can't see themselves. 
They can't, they can't see themselves. Watch this. But I, I'm getting somewhere here because it says here, destruction and misery are in their ways. That you ever been around people and every time you buy them, they, you feel miserable? It's like they suck the life out of you. Watch this. And the way of peace have they not known, meaning no matter what they do, they don't want no peace. You ever apologize to somebody or got on your knees and say, forgive me, forgive me, or that? Come on, let's have peace. No, I prefer destruction. <laughs> you ever tried to please somebody and no matter what you did, they just didn't want? Come on, raise your hand. If, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Yeah. Don't be scared to raise your hand. Don't be scared. You're good. <laughs> peace. Come on, let me do this. I'll work with you. I'll work with you. They're like, no, you know, I'm going to go behind the shadows and try to kill you. <laughs> it's just kind of what I do. It's kind of how I was raised. Just try to, like, hurt people. <laughs> Destruction and misery are in my ways. It's just what I do. It's just kind of just kind of my thing. It's kind of like what I, what gets my adrenaline up. Seeing you cry out for help. Love it. Seeing you crawl and beg for forgiveness. <laughs> There's people like that. <laughs> There's people like that. There's people like that. There's people like that. And they're, 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 this is the ways of man. Watch this. And, because, and, and here's why they're like this. There is no fear of God before their eyes. If there's anything that we need to put in our homes, it's the fear of God. Amen. When you have the fear of God, no person has to watch your actions. Right? If you notice in, in this church, we ain't doing no uh, divine investigation on you. Well, are you living right? Are you living right? Huh? Are you living? Are you living? Are you living? Are you living right? 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 Are you? We don't. We don't do that. We don't, we don't do that, because we're trying to put a fear of God in you, that nobody has to be around. You could be by yourself at home, and you you have a reverence to God's word and God's spirit, where you are gonna live right, whether somebody's watching you or not. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> Amen. We, we don't want to control anybody's behaviors or have this behavior modification. We want people to have an authentic relationship with God. Amen. Amen. Now, we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, and that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. So he's saying because of the presence of the law, there is the knowledge of sin. It, it shows the sin. They had 613 laws, and those laws were revealers of sin. Now, this is what's, what's amazing to me. With all the negative things that he said in here about man, man's messed up. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. People in, in this world, people are, 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 are murdering, murdering people and, and they're harming one another. And that's, that's a world with the absence of God. That's a world that isn't under the influence of God. They're robbing. They're thieving. They're, there's human trafficking. There's, there's abuse. There's molestation. There's all of this nonsense out there in the world. It's sickening. It's, it's deadening. It's, it's fearful. It's, it's terrible. And, and when you look at man and, and first responders, they see the worst side of man, like the, the policemen and, and, the, and the firemen. And, uh, they see the worst side of, 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 of man's actions and man's decisions. And they see the domestic violence and they see the rapes and they see all of these things in the gangs. And, and it doesn't look good. Man hasn't, man's been on this world for a while and and, and I don't know if it's become better. We've got better inventions, but, but it's like inventions of evil things. It's, 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 it hasn't become good. It's not a good thing what man has done. So my question is, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visitest him, according to Psalm 8. 
When I consider the work of your fingers, the heaven, the moon, and the stars, who, who am I that you would want to talk to me? When I, according to Romans, that when I'm just spoiled milk, that should be thrown away and thrown outside. Why would you want to die for me? Why would you want to shed your blood for me? When the world tried to write me off. Come on. When I tried to write myself off. Why in the world would you want to pay that type of price for a sinner like me? I'm so thankful for the grace and the mercy of God. That when we were unprofitable, we had nothing to offer him. He was willing to come down on a cross. And he was willing to be buried for us. And he was willing to rise up three days later for us and he thought of every one of us on the cross even if he thought of us as spoiled milk he said I don't care if it's spoiled milk as long as I put my blood on it I'm able to make it into something greater than it was before and what the world is trying to throw away I can clean it up come on somebody I'm so thankful that God can clean it up what is man? Man that is violent. Man that is unprofitable. Man whose throat is like an open sepulcher. Man whose tongues have used deceit. Man who has cursed and have been bitter. Man who has shed blood. Man who has no peace. Man that doesn't fear God. Why in the world would God come to earth for a man like that? When I didn't want him, he still wanted me. When I didn't want him, he still wanted me wanted me. When I didn't want to seek for him, he wouldn't stop seeking for me. When I didn't want to spend time with him, he wanted to spend time with me. And before he formed me in the belly, he already knew me. Come on, he knew my unprofitable nature. He knew how bad I was deep down. But somehow in the middle of the spoiled milk, he saw destiny in me. He saw me on church on a Wednesday night what is man that thou art mindful of him oh my goodness we had nothing to offer. This is what Paul is getting to. That we have nothing to offer. That we have nothing to offer. We're, we're under sin. Well, why would God still want me if I'm in sin? If I'm in sin and sin is disobedience, why would God want a disobedient child? Come on, somebody. Because this is the grace and the mercy and the love of God that Paul is bringing us into. To show us how we have nothing to offer him. And we are unprofitable at the very core of our being yet he wants every fiber of our being because he still sees future and destiny in us if God sees destiny in you and you're just spoiled milk come on somebody you've got to stop disqualifying yourself from the kingdom you've got to stop disqualifying yourself saying God can't use you because God's willing to use anything that he puts in his hands what is man? What is man? His mind was full of me while I was wrestling in sin. His mind was full of me. Why, why are you thinking of me? I've got nothing to offer. Who thinks of small spoiled milk every day? Who thinks of spoiled milk in the morning and in the evening? But he says his mind was full of man. That he couldn't get man off of his mind. He saw man spilled out on the floor hopeless. Everybody walking on it. Everybody pushing dirt on it. Everybody throwing it on the outside but his mind was full of man my goodness this is the heart of the gospel and the heart of Romans what God can do with the Gentile and a Jew that are messed up that are messed up without God that he can bring them into his image and he can conform them into his plan with all of their mess ups and weaknesses he says I still love the boy I still love the girl come on somebody is that they, they hate me they've cursed me they've been bitter they've tried to hurt people but I still want them wow. Wow. the gospel is beautiful that, that in the gospel even the murderer has a chance if God's grace is sufficient for the sinner that committed a murder God's grace is sufficient for the saint that made a mistake 
And I know in the church we have more of a habit, thank God not in this church, but in the mainstream church, we have more of a habit of being gracious with new people that come from murdering and all of this stuff. Ah, But it's like there's something in the mainstream church that they don't have the same grace for those that have been raised in the church. But the same grace that saves murderers is the same grace that saves people that made a mistake. Come on, somebody. I'm telling you what is God cares about you. God cares about your family. God cares about your future. There is hope for you. And even no matter how bad you've been, there is still a future. Everybody stand to your feet and clap your hands to the Lord right now. Come on, somebody clap your hands to the Lord right now. What is man? What is man? I had nothing to offer God. I said I had nothing to offer God. I was unprofitable. I was unprofitable. Yet he said, you're unprofitable, but I want to use you for my glory. All of us, we don't have anything to offer him. But he wants to put his glory upon your life and make you something beautiful, something marvelous that only he can get credit for. That you can't credit your personal disciplines. I'm here, listen, I pray, I fast, I study, I love. But let me tell you, I'm not here today because of those three things. I'm here today because of Jesus. And it's Jesus who has fueled me and given me the energy to pray and to fast and to study. That's, that's, that's his work. That's not my work. It doesn't come from my basketball background. It doesn't, know, it doesn't come from that. It comes straight from Jesus. Because no matter how educated I was before I got saved, I couldn't understand the Bible. I was smart. My family's smart. We come from an educated background. But I couldn't understand the Bible no matter how smart I was wasn't until he baptized me with his spirit and whenever I received his spirit and I started speaking in that heavenly language and I started opening up the scriptures all of a sudden revelation and understanding started coming to me why so he could get the glory and I wouldn't take the credit that's what Paul said he said listen I've done this, I've done that, I've achieved that, I've done that. He said, but I counted all as loss for the cause of Christ. Because if I have all of that and I don't have him, I have nothing. But if I have him, I have everything that I need. What is man? God is mindful of you. He doesn't forget about you when you're struggling. Wave a hand if I'm helping somebody here. He doesn't, he doesn't. Cast you aside and throw you out in your struggle. This is what Paul is getting to because he's about to show the righteousness of God and justification by through faith and the work of Christ in a vessel. Wow. It's miraculous what God can do. God, God will start changing your posture. How you take somebody that was a, a, a murderer and, and you start dressing them up and put them in as a preacher. How, how, put me on that rehabilitation program. All they can say is, Jesus. Jesus. Everybody say, Jesus. Let's lift up our hands to the Lord. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for these amazing people. We make a commitment to put ourselves into your hands. We make a commitment to put ourselves into your presence. God, we are nothing without you. We thank you for this book. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the inspired word of God. God, I'm asking you right now, 
to, to show the people their worth that comes only from you. It doesn't come from anything that they have. It doesn't come from their money. It doesn't come from their prestige. It doesn't come from their background. But God, it comes from your grace and from your presence in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, let them have an amazing week this week. Open up the windows of heaven over their lives. I speak the glory of God over them. Give them increase right now. Show them what you can do in them God turn their lives around God turn their circumstances around in the name of Jesus Christ I pray in Jesus name amen can you clap your hands to the Lord